Over the winter recess, I have seen an unprecedented revolt from the people of Cogra against the planning policies of this government. The Oxford English Dictionary defines planning as the control of urban development by a government authority. Mr Speaker, in Sydney today, nothing could be further from the truth. There is virtually no control on the pace, nature, design or location of buildings in which we are subjecting our citizens to. We are instead being hit with an avalanche of many ugly, poorly built developments that are substantially detracting from the beauty of our city. The bottom line, Mr Speaker, is that when it comes to planning in Sydney, we are getting it badly wrong. We had a perverse situation last week where Chris Johnson, the CEO of the Urban Task Force, wrote an op-ed saying that we should have no more NIMBYs and instead more YIMBYs, or yes in my backyard. He was saying to Sydney, not only do you have to take these monstrosities, but you should be happy about it too. In other words, shut up and take your medicine. In my view, a NIMBY is someone who objects to a new pool being built or a second storey on a neighbour's property. In other words, a nuisance. But when the community objects to a 20-storey tower being constructed in the heart of their suburb, they are not being difficult or petty because they are right when they say it will change that community forever. It is this sentiment and, and the thousands of development applications littering Sydney like a pockmarked face that is undermining community support for planning, urban design and immigration. I have previously spoken about a development in Cogra where an applicant already had approval for 330 units, asked for a rezoning to increase their allocation to 556 units and at the flick of a pen made an estimated $60 million in profit, all thanks to the New South Wales Government. Mr Speaker, this development is 150 metres from the fourth biggest school in the state. In return for this largesse, they returned $1 million in a voluntary planning agreement and gave 100 grand to the local school. Mr Speaker, what good is that going to do given the giant negative externalities everyone else has to suffer as a result of these developments? Last week I visited Cogra Public School who are being faced with unprecedented high-rise directly around their school due to a massive increase in density in Cogra North. Mr Speaker, this school will be in permanent shadow. All this rubbish about the success of IHAPS, these panels are approving nearly everything that lands in front of them. The joint re regional planning panels are worse. The skylight of my community does not look sleek, new or inviting with ordered beautiful buildings. Rather, they are a hodgepodge of different shapes and sizes jammed into the block wherever and however they can fit, like a giant game of Tetris. The complete lack of uniformity and design principles mean that from a distance, they look like a face full of smashed teeth. There should be a verdict on IHAPs. They aren't working. They are simply too friendly to developers. Mr Speaker, Section 96 variations are completely undermining community support for density. There are stories too numerous to mention of developers promising a park or pool or a form of civic amenity to go along with their proposed plans only to apply for a variation, scuttling those plans after the umpire has made his decision. Mr Speaker, the cynic in me believes it's a time-tested process. Launch the plan, throw in a park to shut the locals up, get approval for the high-rise, then kill the park later on. We need to end the practice of major developers who've already been granted generous construction terms coming back for more. We also must make it clear that if Sydney is going to have this level of density, it must be shared evenly across all areas. There should be a recognition that developers and those who have had their land rezoned, delivering them a windfall gain, are going to have to dip into their share in order to fund and support infrastructure for those in the immediate area. Most importantly, new open spaces. There is an opportunity for the parliament, the opposition, to pause this madness and instead imagine how beautiful, accommodating and pleasurable our cities and suburbs could be. It will require policy changes on density, design, scale and community recreation areas, but it must be done or Sydney is done for. The planning minister is in the process of ruining the Emerald City. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the government's backflips on his own policies. Mr Speaker, time is running out. 
We owe it to future generations to build with